Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to sew along with you the Diamond Clutch Wallet by Teresa Lucio Designs. Now this one I have been making pretty much since the very beginning of my sewing career four years ago. This is the second ever style wallet I ever made. The Necessary Clutch Wallet was the first one, this was the second, and both of them are still, I swear, my utmost favorite wallets to make. Now this one is 100% domestic machine friendly and I have experience with that because these are two of the wallets I made for myself back like four years ago. Um, it's actually really fun to look at these because I can see it was before I knew what edge painting was and see? <laughs> My goodness, where is this one I have edge painted? So <laughs> um, both of them are like that but these are four years old and look how well they have held up. Um, no problem sewing these on my Alna 680. I made these two even before I had my Juki 2010Q um, semi-industrial machine. So again, any pattern is pretty much domestic machine friendly depending on what your choices are. Even with vinyls, I think it would be fine. Um, there are a few thick places when you do use vinyl, so keep that in mind if you are on a domestic and you are gonna be using vinyls. Um, let me show you some of the amazing features of, of this pattern. So the front flap is here and there are two different flap shapes you can use here. I prefer the squared one because I find it easier to top stitch that. When you open it up, you have eight card slots on, on vertically going down this way, six horizontal ones, a slip pocket and a slip pocket. Um, I recommend using cottons on the interior just to help keep that thickness down. Uh, it has a very, very generous coin pocket on top. My favorite thing about this is underneath this flap, you have the slip pocket. I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, so the big one in a case. And it fits, how amazing is that? Um, this is just the perfect clutch when you don't want to be carrying a purse. You could just go ahead and carry this. You could also, like I did here, I added on a wristlet to this one just on a zipper pull. Um, materials I used in this. Uh, this vinyl is a pre-order of vinyl from Fantastic Custom Fabrics. They have a Facebook group. They're here in Canada. My zipper and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala. I have to show off this zipper pull. This is one of the, can you see that? That is one of the brand new ones Blue Cala has in and I just love it. I've just ordered it in multiple finishes. It's just so pretty. My magnetic snaps are from Emmeline Beggs. Um, and that is it for hardware, very minimal. Um, Interfacing, all my cotton pieces are backed with EB Fuse Lite, which is a medium woven interfacing. An equivalent would be SF101. And my main st stabilizer is Decoville Heavy. You could also use Peltex. And I know some of you are probably thinking, you're sewing through Decoville Heavy. How does that domestic machine friendly? You actually put the main stabilizer into it once it's all sewn. And I know that sounds scary, but trust me, it isn't. I show you how to do it super fast and super easy with the way that I roll it up and spread it out. Hold on to the end and you will see how I do that. Um, don't be scared of it, it's pretty easy. Um, and other than that, the other Decoville heavy pieces that are in here is in the flaps outside of the seam allowances and in this slip pocket outside of the seam allowances. So you never sew through the Decoville heavy until the very last step, but your machine should be able to handle it just fine. Anyways, uh, what else to say about this? Thank you, Teresa, for allowing me to make this tutorial. I'm excited to share this one. Uh, if you are watching this in August 2022, this is the wallet that's wrapping up Wallet Week. Uh, did seven <laughs> seven days, a new wallet every day. I do have a playlist for that. Um, I'll try to remember to tag that at the end uh, so you can check it out. And yeah, it was a really fun week and I really do hope that you like this tutorial. So how about we get to making this and I'll catch you guys on the other side. Okay, before we get into parts, uh, this is something I strongly recommend doing for the card slots is there is actually a video in the pattern that shows how to do this. I just cut these out of cardstock and what these are, are they are gonna make it so we can do our card slots super easy and super fast. So. As per her pattern, you can draw the lines for the card slots, but this definitely is a time saver. Okay, so you're gonna need some number five zipper tape, a number five zipper pull, two magnetic snaps, and your nameplate. Pieces wise, you're going to need your front and back pieces, 
you're going to need your stabilizer piece, your uh, strip piece, card slot strip piece, your small um, tab with the decoval heavy fused outside the seam allowances on the exterior piece, your larger tab with decoval heavy on the exterior piece, your card slot backing, your slip pocket exterior with decoval heavy outside of the seam allowances as well as your lining piece, your main body lining piece for the lining, your two coin pocket lining pieces, your large card slots and your skinnier card slot pieces, and two zipper tabs. So we're going to get started by doing our tabs first. So you're going to take the lining piece of your tab, the lining side of your tab, and we are going to figure out where to put the male part of our magnetic snap. So I'm just going to use my pattern piece here, which I punched out the hole, and right there is where I'm going to install my uh, male side on the, on the smaller tab. You're going to do the same thing with the larger pocket tab as well. So go ahead and install those uh, male things backed with decoval heavy like so. And I always like to take a little bit of Gorilla Tape or duct tape and put it over that just to secure those prongs a little more. Now we're going to prepare these for edge coating. Now there are instructions in the pattern how to do this with fraying fabrics if you want to turn them through. I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to be edge painting these so I am going to use a little bit of double sided tape outside of the seam allowances and I'm going to place these wrong sides together like so. I'm going to do the same with the other one. And along these three sides here, we are going to top stitch them with a quarter, eight, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And the top straight edges on both of the pieces, we are going to base with an eighth of an inch. So I'm going in right now with an eighth of an inch seam allowance just along that top edge. And along the sides and the bottom, I'm doing a quarter of an inch top stitch. Making sure that my bobbin thread and my top thread both look excellent because they will both be visible. Up the final side and then finish up the base along that top with the eighth of an inch. You'll do the exact same thing with the smaller tab piece. Again, basting that top, my hand's kind of in the way here, basting the top and going in with a quarter of an inch. Now I want to trim up our, our seam allowances to an eighth of an inch. So I'm just lining up my eighth of an inch line with my top stitching, using my ruler to get nice and straight and even edges. And this is going to leave a really nice base edge for us to do our edge coating. Again, edge coating is completely optional, but it sure does add a nice finishing touch to raw edge type flaps. So once you've done that with both of them, I for these sides, not those long sides that we just basted, but the other sides, I'm gonna do three coats of base coat dense, one coat of color, and then a protecting gloss. While we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna go ahead and work on our card slot. So I mark top at the opposite end, we are doing our bottom edge here. So I'm taking that two and three quarter inch cardstock piece that I cut and using it as my guide to fold this in wrong sides together like so. You can put that one aside. That's the only time we're using that piece of cardboard. Flip it over so right side is up. Take your one and three quarter card slot like so or cardstock, and then you're going to fold it right sides together using that cardstock as a nice crisp edge. Then you're going to grab your two and three eighths piece of cardstock, so that's the width of these cardstock pieces. Put it along that fold that we just made and then fold it wrong sides together. Now with these last two, you're going to alternate them until you have all your card slots done. So in all, we're ending at four folded edges where we will be top stitching. Just makes it super fast. You don't have to draw lines and there's no way to mess up your measurements here. It's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful tip to do it this way. OK, 
Okay, once that's done, go ahead and just kind of even out your card slots and give it a good press when you like what you see. So this is what we have. You're going to fold it out like so. We are going to go ahead and top stitch those four folded edges. So here's the first one. To go in and do the next one, you kind of fold this one in behind like so. Do the next one, so on and so forth. put it all back together and now what we're going to do is just make sure that a card definitely fits in them and they do and we want to find the center um, the center of this which worked out I believe it was four and a quarter ish and I'm just using my erasable pen here and marking down just those first three folds now I'm going to take a little bit of painters tape this is just going to help hold our accordion slots in place while we go and sew up the center so just place a little bit of the painters tape on there this is not sticky it will not stick up like make your leave sticky residue or anything on your fabric now we're going to fold that back part out of the way like so and just sew up here to that third uh, card slot space or folded over edge pivot and go right back down so you're not going all the way to the top you're just going to that third folded over edge pivoting and going back down making sure that that large uh, piece there is folded to the back so you're not sewing through it at the same time okay so now we want this whole piece from the top folded edge to measure four and a half inches so you're going to go ahead and trim any excess once you have them folded wrong sides together now what we're going to do is we're going to take the two raw edges we're going to form a tube and clip these edges in place. And then once that's done, you're gonna go and sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now we can go ahead and bring this tube right sides out like so. You can remove the tape. You don't need the tape anymore. Take this to your iron and give it a super good press. I also went ahead and I basted my two raw edges just to hold everything in place. So you can put that card slot away and now you're going to do the exact same thing uh, with uh, the shorter cardstock pieces that we cut to do our long and skinny card slots. Once again, starting from the bottom, wrong sides together, and then alternating um, each cardstock piece. Once that is done, go ahead, flip it right side up and make sure your card slots are all nice and even and that this is the same length as what is stated in the pattern. So mine measured up the way it was supposed to, so I'm super happy. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to do all of top stitch all the card slots as well as baste up the two long raw edges.
and then baste up those edges to hold those accordion card slots in place. Okay, once again, make sure that the card slots are deep enough for a card, which mine are. Now we're going to take the side strip here and we're going to place it along that left draw edge, wrong or right sides together and clip in place. So again, this is the left side, not the right side. And then you're going to take this to the machine and sew across that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Next, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to press that size strip away like so with the seam pointing towards the side strip and then top, sti top stitch through that side strip. Now we're going to take our card slot backing and we are going to put it right sides together lining up the right raw edge of our card slot piece here. And once that's done we're going to take it to the machine and sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to press this out like this so the seam is going towards that card slot. We're going to bring those two raw edges together and you're going to see how that seam that we had done is going to form um, a guide kind of where we're going to be top stitching next right along here. We're going to sew through that seam with a quarter or an eighth of an inch top stitch as well as base the long raw edge. Once again, making sure our card slots fit in there, we are good. Okay, so now we're going to take our main lining piece. We're going to take the card slots we just worked on. So we're going to have the raw edges on the left-hand side here, card slots opening to the top. Clip this in place. And you can see that other side has made our slip pocket with a really nice finished edge for the slip pocket in behind those vertical card slots. Once that's clipped into place, from the right hand side we're going to put our one inch ruler like so, take our card slots opening to the right, line it up right up against that ruler, and clip this in place. Then at the machine we're going to go ahead base down here, top stitch here, up there, and then base the other one around the three raw edges. So again, base down this side, top stitch along this bottom folded in area. So that is forming our second slip pocket. Baste up the other short side. And then baste around the three raw edges of the other side. So we are two, one slip pocket, your card slots, another slip pocket, put that away for now. So now we're going to work on our exterior slip pocket. You're going to take the lining and the exterior piece, put them right sides together, and just clip along that top edge. Then you're going to go ahead and sew across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
Once we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and into these little corners here. We're just going to snip in um, without cutting our stitching. And then on these corners here, cut on a diagonal without cutting our stitching and then trim our seam allowance down to an eighth of an inch seam allowance-ish. This is just going to make it so those corners pop out really good. Once that's done, you can go ahead and turn this wrong sides together and give that edge a really super good finger press. Now we need to figure out where we're going to be putting the female end of our snap. So you're going to line up our pattern piece with the raw, bottom raw edge and make your mark and go ahead. It should be about one and a half inches down and centered. And then go ahead and install your female side snap with a piece of Decaville heavy scrap or Peltex heavy scrap in behind. And then I like to go ahead and put a little bit of duct tape. I'm going to hold uh, my seam in place here with a few clips. And then we're going to top stitch this with a quarter of an inch top stitch. And then baste the other three raw sides. and then baste the raw sides, the three raw edges. Okay, now that that's done, you're going to take your uh, main back piece. You want to position it if it's a directional fabric, so the direction is going up. Line this pocket up, both right sides up along those three raw edges, and then you're gonna go ahead and base this to that main back piece. Okay, now we want to take our main front piece. Now, if you're using directional fabric like me, you want to have, um, make sure it's going the right way. So um, have it, if it's directional, have it facing up, going to the right side. Put these along their bottom parts, right sides together like so, and so across here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Next, if you've used cotton, go ahead and press that seam open. I'm using vinyl, so I'm just going to go ahead and use some double-sided tape to hold the seam open for me. Okay, next I want to kind of position where I put and install where I want to put my nameplate. This looks like a good place here. Make sure you have it facing the right direction. Now we are going to take our larger tab. We're going to find the center of the top long raw edge. And then on the back side or the top and the bottom of our main piece here, we want to find our centers as well. Now over our slip pocket, we want to put in our magnetic snap like we have here. Line up our center uh, points and you're going to see the... Um, tab is going to bubble out a little bit. That is what we want. We want to make sure it's in the snap. We want to make sure that it's going to place well, but we also want to make sure we have this even. So once you have that there, you can undo the snap and it's going to seem like it hangs lower, but that is exactly what we want. Go ahead and base this in place. Mainly because once we sew the zipper in here, it's going to lift it up that amount that it's going to sit nice and flat. 
All right, so now we're going to attach our smaller tab. We're going to take our lining piece we finished, find our top and bottom centers. And along that top where we left the one inch down from the card slots, we're going to take this snap centered. Both of these are right side up and we're going to baste it in place. Okay, now it's time to install our zipper. So what I've done, I've already got and prepared my tabs. So I folded them into the center like so. And then again, just like bias fold tape. Now I'm going to open it up and put my zipper uh, raw edge in into that fold on both ends. And I'm going to top stitch these in place. So when, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that both sides of the zipper tab were caught. Like mine was. Do the other side. Next, we're going to trim this zipper tabs up to be the same width as our zipper tape. And then we're going to take one of our zipper lining panels. We're going to measure in a half inch from each of the short sides. Now our zipper is shorter than our piece. That is exactly what we want because we do not want our zipper to be caught in our seams when we go to sew. Now I'm going to use some double sided tape here. Go ahead and use clips if you prefer. My lining piece is right side up. My zipper is right side up and my zipper pull is closing to the left. I'm going to put my tabs in between those half inch lines which will make my zipper nice and centered. Stick it or clip it in place. Next, we're going to take the uh, side of the exterior with the big flap. I've put tape along the top again. You can also use clips. And we are going to put this right sides together with the zipper and that lining piece, sandwiching the zipper tape clipping or taping it in place. And we're going to sew across here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you're using a number three zipper, only do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now I strongly recommend changing into your zipper foot here. This will help ensure that you get a nice and straight zipper as you can get nice and close to your zipper teeth with this. So go ahead and sew across there with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance if you're using a number five zipper tape like me or a quarter of an inch if you're using number three zipper tape. Make sure your needle is down if you have to move your zipper pull out of the way. Now we want to bring these wrong sides together like so, giving it a really good press, pulling that lining away from the zipper. And we're going to go through here and top stitch with the flap facing upwards. So we're going to make sure we are top stitching through both the exterior and the lining piece and we are going through the main body piece for that top stitch. And what that is doing with our flap being up is it is keeping our flap where it needs to be and securing that seam underneath. There we go. You can see how nice that fits. We want to clip the magnetic snap and in there just so we have that flap out of the way for when we attach the other side of the zipper. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with our lining piece right side up. Now I didn't mark my marks this time because I'm going to use the piece we just did as my guide for centering. Stick the other side of the zipper tape down nice and centered. Both of these right side up. Again, you can use clips. You're going to take your lining piece next with the tab side is where we're going to be working on now. And we're going to put some more double sided tape or clips along this top part here. And we're going to put this right sides together with that end we just stuck down. 
and once again sew across there with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance if you're using number 5 tape or a quarter of an inch seam allowance if you're using number 3 zipper tape. Now this one feels a little bit more awkward just because we do have that flap in there causing a little bit of bulk. Make sure you're not sewing through um, that larger flap. That's why we have it down and hooked into the magnetic snap so it doesn't get into the way. But if you lift it up like this, it sometimes helps get through that zipper a little bit easier with everything being out of the way. Once that's done, we want to once again, put those panels wrong sides together like so. You want the lining piece to be uh, kind of butterflied out like it is. And we're going to top stitch right through the lining side here with that little flap facing upwards. So we are sewing underneath that flap through the lining side, making sure that our lining pieces are butterflied and we're only catching the one zipper pocket lining piece on the opposite side. Okay, so now this next step, we have to install one more female magnetic snap for the smaller tab. So I'm just kind of folding it in place and making sure everything's going to work out. It worked out being for me about one and three eighths down centered, which was only about an eighth of an inch off of what the pattern piece was. You could use a pattern piece as well along that raw edge. But I like to make sure my snap is going to match up well, so I kind of figure out where I want to put it. Go ahead and install that snap. And now this is going to get go together exactly how we normally do a pouch. So make sure your zipper is open. Bring your lining main panel and your exterior main panel and your zipper pocket lining pieces right sides together. First, I like to start with where our um, zipper was, where we had our zipper tabs and those seams and line those up first because we definitely want that to be as perfect as it possibly can. So I'm lining up those seams. Then I'm going to work down my lining side. We're going to be keeping the bottom of the zipper pocket lining open. One thing I like to do so I get a nice folded edge for when we top stitch it later is I'm just going to fold it up about 3 8 of an inch on each of these sides. And we're going to stitch through that and that's going to help us give our folded edges for later when we go to sew this shut. So now you can go ahead and match up all of the other sides with clips all the way around. Okay, now once that's done, the three sides, not the zipper pockets uh, bottom that we're keeping open, but the other three sides, we're going to go ahead and sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So we're going to start and go over that little 3 8 fold we did, and what that's doing is just folding in those edges for us for later on, so we don't have to um, fight with them to try to get those to turn in. Now when you get to your zipper tab right here, you're going to make sure you are not sewing through your zipper tab. We have it a half inch away from that seam so you should miss those zipper tabs we do not want to sew through them and what that does is make it so we don't get it all puckered in those corners because there will be a slight hole there but that is exactly what we want make sure you take your corners nice and sharp Be aware of where your zipper tab is once again when you come up to where your zipper is. Make sure you're not sewing through your zipper tab, you're just sewing through those seams where we joined our pieces. Okay, now that folded under piece, we're just going to kind of put our fingers in there and you're going to see when you fold it out, it's going to create that nice edge there. We're going to take that and give that a quick press. On our corners, we're going to cut them on an angle as close as we can to the stitching so we can get some really nice sharp corners there when we turn this out. Once you have that, go ahead and turn this whole thing right side out. I find that it helps a lot to bring the um, magnetic snap tabs through first and then the rest comes through pretty easy.
I will admit it is much easier when you do it in all cottons. <laughs> Once you start getting it out, make sure you press out all of your seams and corners. Getting a pointy tool like this to point out those corners really helps. And when you get to these pocket tabs, you want to poke them out. And I like to put my pointer in there to make sure that little hole is there, as you can see right there. You see how nice and square it is and how they kind of sit up above our uh, wallet. It's perfection. So once again, I'm just going to double check that my cards fit. Because if you take the seam too wide, your cards may not fit. I'm going to just kind of do a mock um, fold up to make sure everything lines up good before we do the next step. And it does. Okay, now we're going to be putting in our Decoville heavy piece. Now you're going to want the lining side of our wallet facing up and the sticky glue side of our Decoville light or heavy folded up. I'm going to put it in through our po uh, the pocket opening. I find rolling it like I just did and then going in and flattening it out makes it so much easier to get it in there. Make sure it's right up to the seams and into those corners, which it is. And then go ahead and you can sew shut this, the bottom of the lining zipper pocket. Go ahead, put your zipper pocket back in. Make sure it's lying nice and flat. And then from the cotton side of this, we're gonna go give it a quick steam and a quick press. And that's just going to help activate the glue on the Decaville Heavy to adhere it to the cotton pieces. Okay, once that is done, I'm gonna once again, just make sure everything folded up well and look how perfect it is with that decable heavy piece in there now all that's left to do is we are going to stitch in the ditch along that middle seam on the back um, this is where i change back into my standard foot just to make sure i have a little more control while i stitch in the ditch there so if you get your stitch in the ditch perfect you are not going to see it on the outside hardly at all and you're going to have a nice straight line down the middle of your lining side. Once again, making sure your bobbin thread is really good tension wise as well because it will be seen. Once that's done, make sure everything was caught. There's no holes, it all looks good fold it up. Look how good it looks. Now I have an iPhone 13 Pro and it fits perfectly in its OtterBox in the back here, which is marvelous. And then we're done. All right, that's it, that's all. It's a pretty quick sew. Again, it is one of my favorites, I won't lie. Um, I really, really do hope that you like this tutorial and you will give this a go. If you need a link to the pattern, that is down in the description. And again, if you did like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. A thumbs up helps me out so very much. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That is linked down below in the description. And if you're interested in taking any of my member sew along classes, that link is down below as well if you want to check it out and see what's involved there. Anyways, until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Bye!